welcome. My name is René Torenbeek. I am a systems architect with Real-Time Innovations and in this presentation I will explain the basics of OMG DDS data model definitions. Summarizing this presentation in one slide, OMG DDS defines a strongly typed data distribution middleware. This means that the infrastructure is aware of the structure of the data that it distributes between applications and that those applications interact with the infrastructure by means of strongly typed generated APIs. In order to make this possible at all, the first step of building your system with DDS is to design the structure of the data that needs to be distributed. This presentation covers several concepts of DDS data models and it will illustrate several close similarities to relational database models. So looking more closely at what you will learn in this module, Three core concepts of the DDS infrastructure will be introduced. They are the so-called instances, samples, and data types. From that, the analogies between DDS data models and the more common traditional relational data models will naturally appear. Then, a complete overview of data type constructs supported by DDS will be presented. And finally, a hands-on example will illustrate the practical details of defining your data model using IDL. The presentation is divided into two parts. This is the first part of the two and only deals with the first two bullets. Presentation of the last two bullets is done in part two. Throughout this presentation, a system managing a fleet of trucks is used as an example use case. DDS is used to maintain the state of all trucks in the fleet. That state consists of a collection of dynamic as well as static properties such as the truck's plate, model and make, its location, speed and direction, its fuel level, mileage and distance to empty, and some more administrative information about each truck's maintenance and services. The DDS concepts of instance, sample and data type can very concisely be defined as follows. Every observable item in DDS is called an instance. At any moment in time, each instance has a state. The state of the instance at a certain moment in time is communicated by means of a sample. The samples themselves are instantiations of immutable structured data types with one or more typed attributes. This all sounds fairly straightforward, but it is useful to zoom into each of these concepts. So every observable item in DDS is called an instance. In a DDS domain, each instance is uniquely and immutably defined by the combination of a name, called the topic name, and an ordered list of values, called its key values. All instances go through their own life cycle of creation, updating and deletion. This life cycle is typically managed by exactly one publishing application, although technically speaking, it is valid to have multiple publishers updating the same instance as well. Observing applications express their interest in groups of similar instances of the same type via the topic name. If a subscribing application is interested in a subset of the instances in a topic, then it can use content-based filtering to express that subset by means of a SQL 92 syntax. Note that the word topic is written with a capital T. This is done on purpose because it is an actual class in the DDS specification which has it defined starting with a capital T as well. So the state of each instance is described by an instantiation of a data type, which remains the same for all instances of the same topic. Referring to our truck management use case, each truck is represented by its own instance. For the white truck in the picture, its instance should be created when it is added to the fleet or when the system is started or restarted. Like all trucks in the fleet, the white truck has the associated topic name, let's say truck topic. Among all truck topic instances, the white truck is uniquely identified by its vehicle identification number or VIN. At any time, the truck instance contains information about its plate, its model and its make, and perhaps whether it is on the road or in a garage. This is an example of a slowly changing instance. The state of an instance at a certain point in time is communicated from publishers to subscribers by means of a sample. 
These samples are instantiations of the data type describing the state of the instance. When the white truck returns to the garage from a trip, the publisher maintaining the state of the white truck should communicate the state change to the middleware. In other words, a sample should be written to communicate that state change from on the road to in the garage. Every sample is an instantiation of an immutable structured data type with one or more typed attributes and an indication which of the attributes is or are used as key value, if any. This data type describes the structure of the associated instance types. Practically speaking, data types are like the class definitions of the samples. These data types need to be defined upfront by means of a data definition language, typically IDL. The middleware knows and has to know about the structure. It uses this knowledge to identify instances by their key values for serialization and deserialization and also for advanced data management features like content filtering and for generic publication and subscription tools. This content awareness is an important distinction when comparing DDS to many other data distribution infrastructures. This slide visualizes the concepts in one picture, again using the truck example. We see a picture with four observable items, the instances, which are a green truck, a white truck, and for each of those a device that measures position, speed and direction. Let's say it's a GPS device. The four vertical arrows visualize the life cycles of each of these instances. The horizontal bars indicate updates to the states of the instances. They are the samples. We see one sample for each truck and several for each GPS device. The little green parts of each sample indicate the unique identifiers, the keys. The two tables in the middle define the data types of the two different types of instances. Each attribute in the definition has a name and a type, and the first attribute, the VIN, additionally has the indication that it is a key attribute. Although not explicitly visible in the data definitions, there is a relationship between each truck and its GPS by means of the corresponding VIN. If you are familiar with relational database designs, you will recognize the tables in the middle. In fact, you might have seen several similarities with DBMS concepts in general already. In particular, a DDS instance can be compared to a row or record in a database table. Like the instances, a row is uniquely defined within its table by its key values, and it also has its own life cycle with creation, updates and deletion. The data type describing the structure of each instance state can be compared to the table definition, and the DDS topic itself can be compared to the collection of rows, in other words, to the database table. These analogies illustrate the true nature of DDS. And for that reason, I prefer to call DDS a distributed data management infrastructure. In addition to these structural analogies, there are also some softer resemblances. A mechanism commonly used in databases is the creation of relationships between rows in different tables by means of common attribute values. This mechanism can be applied to the DDS instances as well. However, these kinds of relationships cannot be explicitly defined in the DDS data model in any way. The reconstruction of the relationships need to be done at the application level. The DDS specification does define so-called multi-topics for joining related instances, but that feature is not implemented by Connect DDS nor by other DDS implementations. Note that the relationships are not limited to one-to-one -to -one kinds only, but can also be one-to-many or many-to-many. -many. The latter require separate instances just for the purpose of defining the relationships. With this knowledge, we are ready to take a peek at the DDS data model for the truck fleet use case. It is actually straightforward, so I will not spend too much time on it. Uh, the truck has one-to-one -one relationships with GPS info and fuel gate types and all, they all have the VIN string as their key value. The service type on the bottom left shows how a one-to-many relationship can be implemented by adding yet another key attribute, 
being the date of service, to allow for multiple observable items related to one and the same truck with the same VIN. You can pause the video and inspect all attributes if you like, but this is also the data model that we will be using for later for our hands-on demonstration. In addition to similarities, the DDS data model provides some features that are not typically available in regular databases. We know by now that an instance goes through its individual creation, updating and deletion. DDS exposes information about these lifecycle states to interested observers. This is done by means of extra information which is available for each instance. This is in addition to the regular instance data attributes. First of all, the so-called instance state indicates whether or not any publishers are actively updating the instance or not. If they are, then the instance state is called alive. If they are not, then the instance state can be not alive disposed, that is if the instance has been actively invalidated, or not alive no writers, if it has not been invalidated but publishers have indicated that they no longer update the instance, or they have left completely. The instance state is determined by the behavior of the publishers only. Additionally, observers can observe the view state of an instance. This field indicates whether an observer has already seen this instance before or not. If this is the case, then the instance has a view state called not new. Otherwise, the view state is called new. This allows an application to detect the construction of new observable items. Finally, the sample state can be read or not read to indicate whether an observer has seen a particular instance update before or not. Another concept unknown to databases is the history. If required, DDS can maintain a list of instance updates for each instance. The purpose of this depends on the application. Examples of history functionality on the subscriber side is for buffering of updates to decrease the chance of the application missing updates, or for example to give the application a mechanism to do trending of data. On the publisher side, the purpose of history is more limited to distribution mechanisms, for example for buffering samples to allow for better recovery by the reliability protocol, or for keeping data available for late joining observers. The size of the history can be configured at a fine-grained level using the corresponding QoS settings. The default behavior is not to maintain any history, just like databases do. This concludes the first section about defining the data model. Thank you for your time and attention, and please tune in to the second part of this presentation, which will cover everything about the different data types supported by DDS, and which will include a hands-on demonstration of defining the truck fleet data model. Thank you for watching this portion of RTI's online training, focused on RTI Connects DDS. We'd also like to remind you that there are additional resources located on our e-learning webpage at www.rti.com slash elearning. We also invite you to visit our community portal where you can post general or training related questions and receive answers to those questions. Lastly, please feel free to send an email with your questions or comments to elearning at rti.com. Again, thank you for watching and have a great day.